Tuesday, October 25th, 2011. Uh, please join me in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America to, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Hearing of visitors. Are there any visitors that wish to be heard? Uh, seeing none, I would like to, if I may, Peter, read uh, something that I read at our reorganizational meeting a couple weeks ago. Um, I would like to thank um, Jeanette and Ellen for their support in electing me uh, chairman of the Aberdeen School Committee. And it's a privilege and an honor to serve as your chairman. I'd also like to uh, commend Russ Fitzgerald on his 11 years served on the Abington School Committee. His insights from being on the committee for that long a time are invaluable. Uh, thank you again, Russ, for your service on this voluntary school committee. And reading and approval of all records. The minutes of uh, <clears throat> September 27, 2011. Need a motion to approve the minutes as presented or amended? Second by Ellen. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Need a motion to approve the minutes of uh, the minutes of October 7, 2011, as pre presented or amended? Second by Jim. All in favor? Yeah. Opposed? Unanimous. Communications? There are none. Unfinished business. Mr. Schaefer. Under unfinished business, uh, what I have for you is the MASC MASS Joint Conference Program update of November, upcoming November 9th through the 12th. And brought this to you uh, previously. In terms of in terms of the uh, resolutions that MASC and MASS uh, were looking for their group that um, the, the legislative group that meets to try to affect change in the Commonwealth in terms of teaching and learning and the education of students. And so, in your packet, you have a brief description from MASC on all of the resolutions, and I was just going to go through them uh, one at a time and then ask you uh, for a vote um, on uh, how you'd want your delegate, which will be the chairman, Mr. West, to vote for Abington at that meeting. First resolution is providing greater access for students to explore, for an exploratory visits to Chapter 74 approved vocational educational high schools. What this basically is, is they'd be looking to petition the legislature to require school systems at the eighth grade level to have tours of their local uh, regional vocational schools where those arrangements exist. We already do that in Abington. We do that every single year with our eight, eighth grade students. They're, they're provided the opportunity to go tour South Shore Vocation. So um, I don't think that this is a bad thing if there are other school systems that aren't doing that and students mm -hmm. don't know the opportunities that are available to them that a vocational school can provide it. I think this, this would be a good thing for schools to do. So I don't know if people would be willing to vote uh, on that. Um, so my, my recommendation would be approval of resolution one. So, looking for a motion from someone to approve, unless, you know, further discussion. Any further discussion? No. no? Motion to approve the resolution one. Approved by Jeanette. Second, Second by Alan. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. The second is uh, with regard to teacher evaluation. What MASC, and it's sponsored by the Wareham School Committee, what MASC is looking to do is to have an updated Chapter 70 formula to reflect the increased cost associated with the enhanced instructional leadership of all Massachusetts teachers. 
the new evaluation system is going to require more work from the evaluators than in the principals uh, than already occurs in, in the management of the school. In the business model, people always say, why don't schools function more like businesses? And the business model is a five to one, generally, ratio, a control ratio, a span of control over employees. What uh, we have in, in school systems is sometimes we have 30 people, 40 people, that principals are evaluating. The new tool that we talked about at a previous school committee meeting is going to be, um, it's a good change in terms of affecting improved student achievement, but it's going to be more burdensome on um, administrators. So what, what MASC is looking to do is to update the Chapter 70 formula to improve Chapter 70 funding for districts so that they're better prepared to implement this new tool. Any increase in Chapter 70 formula for schools to improve the lives of students would be something that I would certainly recommend to the committee. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my recommendation would be uh, to ask for a motion to uh, approve Resolution 2 as presented. Okay, I need a motion to approve Resolution 2. Alan, second by Jeanette. All in favor? Aye. It's unanimous. Resolution 3 is the charter school funding formula. They are not very specific here as to how they want to change the formula, but what this resolution basically uh, submitted by the Gloucester School Committee pushes uh, to ask the legislature to change the way charter schools are funded currently. What they do now is when a student in a Massachusetts town elects to go to a charter school, approximately $5,000 is taken off of the funding formula for that system. So you've, you multiply $5,000 times 10 students and, and you've got, um, they take that off the funding formula. What this would do is uh, review that because uh, it's their belief that it doesn't cost $5,000 per pupil that are taken from the public school to educate those students. Um, the average per pupil cost can be far higher for a school system but that's because the school system is also educating students with greater needs in special education at a higher cost, which generally doesn't occur for those charter schools. They're not faced with that, those same uh, challenges that most public schools are faced with. So my recommendation, um, anytime you want to review the funding formula um, to make sure it's more equitable, that's a good thing. So my recommendation would be to for motion to approve this as presented. Can I just say, Peter, that uh, the meetings that I've been going to for the past couple years, there's always been something in there about the inequity of the charter school funding versus the public school funding. So this isn't anything new. It's just they want to get the, the um, be on level playing ground for each of them. So we need a motion to. Uh, Approve re resolution number three. Make motion by Ellen. Second by Jeanette. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. It's unanimous. Resolution four, an enactment uh, to freeze, to, to place a freeze on the federal regulation pending the reauthorization of No Child Left Behind. This is submitted by MASC, and what they're looking to do is um, hold the reauthorization of No Child Left Behind because they believe it's uh, not based on credible research, it's intellectually dishonest, overreaching in the impact, unworkable in the implementation, and unfair to more than 80% of the nation's public schools who will suffer sanctions provided by the regulations enacted in the implement of the law. Basically, what they're contending here is that uh, Massachusetts has the highest standards in the nation. Massachusetts students outperform the rest of the nation and that's going to create a system by which our schools are sanctioned by No Child Left Behind as failures. And so uh, their point is that uh, we're testing too often um, and there are, there are good and there are bad. There's good and there's bad to the testing, in my, my own personal opinion. Um, the testing has improved the standards for our students. It has, um, it has made people uh, 
teach to those standards. Uh, at the same time, it's unfair that there's one test that judges what people do because mm -hmm. it's uh, the death of, of creativity and critical thinking skills as people teach more and more to the test. So uh, my recommendation would be until that's worked out that we'd certainly um, want to hold off on the reauthorization. Um, so I'd be asking if people would uh, approve that as presented. I need a motion to approve uh, resolution number four as presented. <coughs> motion by Jeanette, second by Ellen. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Resolution five is also about the state educator evaluation system. MASC is would, would like to petition the legislature to fund at full cost the implementing of these new regulations. MASC is pet petitioned the legislature to enact by statute requirements that these regulations be reviewed not later than every two years in order to ensure that the unelected state bureaucrats will not have the authority to impose by regulation additional mandates that carry unreimbursed costs to the local public school districts. That again is about that uh, evaluation system, wanting to make sure that we're prepared adequately to um, implement that in a way that's fair and reasonable before it's thrust upon people. So I, my recommendation would be, you know, we'd also, I, I don't know that this um, is going to stop the, the ball, and I don't know that it's, that it's uh, just my opinion, I think, the new evaluation tool will be a good thing if it's done fairly and equitably. Um, I don't know that we're going to be ready to implement it as quickly as people want to implement it. It's my only concern. So I think um, communicating that through these types of measures would be a good thing. So my recommendation would be to approve Resolution 5 as presented. Okay. Um, let me just say before we go away from this that uh, um, most of the resolutions here are um, pretty short and straightforward. Some of them can be rather long and drawn out. If there's any sticking points of any resolution at all, it might be resolution number five. But uh, I'll let you know and uh, get back to you at our next meeting. So I need a uh, motion you to know, you, you would always also ask your delegate to, to abstain from a vote if you choose. I mean, yes. That's, that's, a, that's the purview of the board. I need a motion to approve the minute or the um, resolution number five. Yeah. Second by Jim. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Okay. Under personnel under personnel administration, under the report of the superintendent of schools, I've accepted the resignation of Deborah Leary as a paraprofessional within the public schools. I've approved the appointment of Catherine Martin as a part-time recess lunch paraprofessional within the school department. I've approved the appointment of and Andrea Doyen as an instructional technology liaison. That's a stipended position. I've approved the appointment of Ms. Margaret Collins as a part-time cafeteria worker. I've granted Ms. Carol DeShaney a leave of absence in accordance with the Family Medical Leave Act and approved the appointment of uh, Kathy Kane as a long-term substitute secretary uh, for uh, Carol DeShaney. Under other matters, when it comes up, Felicia, would you mind with the lights too, or yeah. Dimmy, would you mind help with the lights? Okay. I can do the, um, I'll start while we're waiting for the image. In early September, we had a, a committee uh, get together and we worked on renewing the Avenue Public Schools strategic plan. Now, the strategic plan is going to be a document that I'm going to bring to you in coming months, and it's, uh, it's we've got quite a bit of information from um, our vision, our mission, our guiding principles, to uh, action plans, action steps, uh, ways that we'll be held accountable to improving uh, the Abington Public Schools, so that the Abington Public Schools over the next five to eight years uh, becomes that system um, and grows from where it is to be what we all want it to be. The strategic plan is, is the tool uh, that's used 
to build our school improvement plans, our evaluations of, of principals, um, my evaluation, and, and the direction that we're going in for our children. So uh, it's important that this is something that's created by a broad base in the community. That's exactly what we did in early September, and we started the process. But we're still, it's still under construction. We're still working on the action plans. However, I thought what would be most appropriate was for me so that you didn't hear this all in one night and then you're quickly asked for approval that it made sense that we start by um, talking about the committee, its, its, its mission, its vision, the work that was done, just have you have the information that allows time for public comment, for uh, parents to ask you questions. I'd be having um, a meeting next week with a group of parents in the afternoon. I've invited anybody in the community that would like to come. Um, we're going to talk about strategic planning and the future of the Avenue Public Schools. Again, it's, it's sort of a time for public comment uh, because this is important work. We need to gain the support of a broad base of people in, uh, with the Avenue Public Schools uh, because our mission is important and our mission is large. And without a broad base of support, we won't be successful. Um, we can work all day long for kids and if the community uh, doesn't agree with the direction we're going and what we're doing, um, we will let those kids down. Or minimally, we will not uh, achieve what we want to achieve or what we could achieve with the support of our community and parents. So um, I'm just going to read a brief uh, a blurb to you, an introduction from, from what will become uh, a document that we'll publish uh, after we consider approval. Um, strategic planning is a process for creating an organization's preferred future. It is a long-range planning process for organizational renewal and transforming, which provides a framework for improving programs, management functions, and evaluation of the organization's progress. Analyzing relevant external trends in their implications. We did that as a group. We took current literature. We took the trends in education. We, we had hundred or so uh, pages of the most current research, 200 pages of the most current research and literature on educational trends, and we started with that in terms of an external scan in the goals for uh, students and children in uh, Abington. We also did some assessing of the organizational capacity to manage the external change. We developed a mission statement and guiding beliefs. We are in the process of establishing goals and objectives and action plans designed to move the organization to where it wants to be. This will set the strategic direction to follow to achieve our mission and its objectives. Communicating this mission, the beliefs, the goals, and the objectives to all stakeholder groups is important. That's what I'm starting to do tonight. Um, we'll put it on our website. We're going to have a public, again, a public forum next week. Uh, we'll continue to um, talk about this plan. We're going to implement the action plans uh, as we develop them and ask uh, for your approval of them. And we're going to monitor the progress and uh, continue to renew the action plans as we move forward. So I need to thank these people, um, Mr. West, Dr. Thomas, Felicia Michella, uh, Aaron Heyer, Jason Lynn, Terry Sullivan, uh, Roseanne Kapuska, Amy Scalaro, Matthew McCurtain, uh, Dr. Rich, Jessica Kinsman, uh, uh, and Andy Burbine. Um, so we have mostly administrators on that page, but we also had um, the head of the Abington Education Association, who's also a teacher and a member of our board of selectmen. That's the same slide. We also had uh, teacher Andrea Doyle, Suzanne Furness, who's a tutor and a parent, Beth Golden, PTO representative, Elizabeth Gonzalez, an English teacher, Joe Lavelle, business, Kelly McDermott, guidance. Pat Narcotta, a PTO representative, Michael Nickley, a student at the middle school, Maria Porcello, an Abington High School student, Steve Wakelin as a community representative, Eileen Walls, who's a retired teacher as a community representative, uh, Leanne Zarkoskis, and it was facilitated by uh, Dr. Hearn, who does this work across the state. Uh, he's, he's a mentor in districts across the state and working for Teachers 21. Uh, the proposed mission statement. So over a period of two and a half days, 
the mission statement that the group, that the group agreed upon was uh, that the mission of the Avenue Public Schools is to provide all students with relevant, challenging educational experiences, to prepare them to be engaged, responsible citizens in a global community. I spent uh, some time talking about the need to create in our students 21st century skills, which um, really translate down to those critical thinking skills that we want all of our students to have. Because the technology that we introduce today will not be the technology that they'll be using when they graduate. In five years, technology uh, turns over and we can work very hard to create in our students, students that know how to do things like PowerPoint presentations and, and create web pages and then all of that will change uh, for your average seventh or eighth grader before they even graduate from high school. So what we need to do is we need to teach our students to be ready to use those tools today in their studies and as they go off into college, but then also prepare them to be problem solvers so that they can use the, te the technology uh, of the future as it evolves because they will be competing on a global level, um, far beyond the city limits of Abington. So. And then the proposed vision statement created by this group, uh, the Abington Public School District, in partnership with families and the community, is a model school system that provides opportunities for all students to think critically and creatively, communicate effectively, and act responsibly to achieve their highest potential in academics, arts, and athletics. We are dedicated to providing state-of-the-art resources for teaching and learning, technology, and facilities in an environment that is safe and supportive, enabling students to become lifelong learners. Our students are prepared to face the challenges of the future in an ever-changing world. One of the things that I know is going to come out of this is an action plan that includes the, the uh, construction and or renovation of school buildings. It's Abington's time and it's Abington's turn to vote on whether or not they want to build or renovate schools. We have been writing statements of interest for years now, two years. The bottom fell out of the economy. We held off on that and it is time to ask Abington, in my opinion, uh, whether or not they want to build or renovate schools. And I'm hopeful that they will choose to upgrade and update their facilities for our students. And, and all of that begins with the submission of a feasibility plan and to work towards getting that plan approved at the town. Our goal, my goal would be to bring back to this committee for your approval a plan to present that at the town meeting in the spring and to try to gain support for that feasibility plan in the community. Now, what, we, what this feasibility plan means, uh, because there can be some confusion around it, is it means that a school system works with MSBA, MSBA part pays for a part of it, and then uh, similar to the way that they're paying for part of the windows at the Woodsdale, there'll, there'll be an equation that they'll, that they'll use that they fund somewhere between 50 to 60 percent of it. And then you do the uh, analysis of your infrastructure, analysis of your program, analysis of what, your program sh what you want your program to be, the analysis of what your infrastructure can support, and then you uh, look for uh, the most um, affordable way to build or renovate to improve and get to where you want to be so that, your, so that your program matches what your facilities can offer. Now, that in the past was a middle school. People want to build a high school. Uh, I don't know what will come out of feasibility with. The feasibility committee involves groups of people from the community in a building committee. So there'll be an opportunity for the community to provide input uh, to that process. The reason in the past the need was to build a middle school was because we have a space problem, kindergarten through grade eight. Building a middle school solves that problem. The high school is currently laid out like a high school. However, 
the high school does need an auditorium. The high school could use improved multiple purpose playing field space. And it, it also um, it needs in that auditorium slash arts area, uh, in addition to that, it needs a, a larger library to serve the number of students we have at Abington High School. How all of this comes out of feasibility, I do not know. If we could build a campus setting up near Abington High School where we could, where we could get at all of these birds with one stone and either create uh, a space up there for a middle school that would solve the pre-K through eight needs, that would be, I think, wonderful. I don't think anybody in Abington would, would disagree with that plan. But I don't know coming out of that plan what that would look like. But I do know coming out of feasibility, you come out of feasibility with schematics to go out to bid to build or renovate schools. And because you come out of feasibility with all of those things that I described, ready to, ready to bid, ready to build, ready to renovate, uh, the cost can be about a quarter of a million dollars. $750,000 is a ballpark number. I'm sorry, three, I'm sorry, three quarters of a million dollars. Thank you very much. So, uh, and there's a range in there. We don't know what that would cost for a community our size until we go down that road. But it's time to go down that road and uh, that will be one of the action steps of this plan. So I wanted to, I wanted to mention that here tonight. Um, in terms of guiding beliefs for the strategic plan, it was agreed upon that the guiding beliefs for the Avenue Public Schools would be that we would continue to make decisions in the best interest of our students. And I don't believe I have a slide for this, but I want to just, I'm just going to mention them. Support all students in achieving success. Foster the physical, intellectual, technological, technological, social, emotional, and artistic development of our students. Create safe, tolerant, supportive, organized, and equitable learning environments. Provide challenging educational experiences that build character. Develop self-discipline and personal responsibility. Promote creativity, problem-solving, effective communication, and critical thinking skills. Cultivate the educational partnership among home, school, and community. Nurture a culture of collaboration, collegiality, and mutual respect. Encourage staff initiative and innovation. Implement professional development as essential for effective instruction and improved student learning. Review and update curriculum, instruction, and assessment in a regular cycle. Recognize effective and appropriate technology as essential for teaching and learning, and inspire all students to become lifelong learners. So the areas that we're going to focus on will be, obviously, teaching and learning will be a goal area. Technology will be a second goal area. Finance and district operations will be a third goal area. Facilities will be a fourth goal area. And then uh, community support will be the fifth goal area that we will create action plans for. Again, not looking for approval tonight, but I certainly would be interested in, um, in, in comments or uh, in the coming weeks or months um, questions uh, as we create this plan. Questions, comments, questions? Uh, I have an update for you on the appointment of a school committee member. There, a posting, uh, I want to make sure that we, that we announce this on cable also. There's been a posting that's been posted by the town hall and the school department, it's up on both websites. It should be posted here in this building, uh, asking the community for interested people to please submit a letter of interest to both the school committee and the Avenue Board of Selectmen by charter. That's exactly how it prescribes the process uh, takes place. So that posting period is October 18th to October 27th. On November 7th at 6.30, here in this room, in the Cotter Room at the Town Hall, there'll be a joint meeting between the Board of Selectmen and the Abington School Committee, where an appointment will be made by the vote of the attending members of both committees, uh, by the committee and the board, uh, by, a, by a majority vote. And then that person who is appointed by that joint group will be in place on the school committee until the election in the spring 
the, the regular town election cycle, um, at which time that position is uh, is up in, in terms of the election process. So that's an interim, it's an interim position. Uh, that's uh, that process that I just outlined uh, meets to the letter of the town charter in in terms of the process and uh, just wanted to make sure that uh, that was talked about here tonight and that it went out on cable for so that people were aware of what was going on. Questions? The next item I have for you is an out-of-state field trip request from uh, Joyce Harrington and Charlie Blanchett for the grade 7 and 8 band to go to the Great East Festival at Canopy Lake Park in Salem, New Hampshire. Anytime we have a, a group that, we, that goes out of state, we've asked the committee for their approval. Uh, basically, ever since 9-11, we added that policy uh, to the Avenue Public Schools. Um, this is one exit into New Hampshire, um, but it's still out of state, so we, we want to certainly get your uh, approval for it. That trip would take place pending your approval on 525 of uh, 2012. Okay, so we need a motion to approve the Frolio Band trip to the Great East Festival at Canopy Lake Park in Salem, New Hampshire on May 5th, 2012. Motion. Motion by Jeanette. Second by Jeanette. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Next item I have is a, a donation uh, of overhead doors valued at $1,725 for the Memorial Field press box from the Memorial, the Memorial Field Improvement Account. Um, Sean Riley uh, made sure um, that, uh, that the doors currently um, were deteriorating to a point where their safety security issue and Sean um, wanted to make sure that they were improved. And so uh, he's offered and has, has asked the boosters out of that the uh, Memorial Field Improvement Account to fund this for $1,725. So I'd ask that you would accept that gift. Okay, so we need a motion to approve the acceptance of the overhead doors valued at $1,725 by the Memorial Field Press Box from the Memorial Field Improvement Account. Mm -hmm. Motion by Jeanette. Second. Second by Ellen. All in favor? Aye. It's unanimous. And I will send a thank you letter on behalf yes. of the committee to Sean yes. uh, for that donation. So thank you. Uh, secondary school, uh, summer school report. Every year over the summer, we have a summer school program for our high school students. It's an academic summer school program. It is self-funded and it's meant to remediate, it can't replace a school year, but it's meant to remediate and, and somehow continue the learning so that good work can be done over the summer with uh, our secondary summer school students who could use the extra work. And um, this last year, a total of 46 students participated in the secondary summer school program. The program offered high school students eight courses and subjects from math and English and history and science, in math, English, history and science. The middle school program included an integrated middle school course which offered mathematics, English, uh, science, and history. The 46 students that enrolled in the program completed the program in the uh, areas that they were enrolled, uh, and that represents 100% success rate. We generally don't get all of the students that make it through the summer school program because if they miss, I think it's two days, they automatically uh, fail uh, because again, you can't make up a school year. We're not trying to make up a school year, but in a, in a summer school program, every day is critical. Um, one of the things in this report that the director mentioned was um, she'd like to update the summer school curriculum maps to be reflective of what's currently going on. We've got common core changes during the school year, uh, and so that's something that we're going to want to, that I'll, that I'll support, that we want to make sure that we update the summer school curriculum. And uh, I just want to make the committee aware of, uh, of this information. Um, every year I ask the director to write me this report so that we can 
have an update on, on what occurred over the summer. So I'm not looking for uh, anything here. Just wanted to keep you informed and certainly answer any questions that you might have. Any questions? Just wanted to announce that November 13th through the 19th is American Education Week, and it's the 90th anniversary of American Education Week. Interestingly enough, um, every year we have an American Education Week, and we invite parents to come into the schools, um, which is sort of ironic because we want the parents um, around the schools and participating in the lives of their students. And I think you know that at the elementary level, your students actually want you there. But as they progress through the system, they fewer and fewer students feel that way. Not all students feel that way, but fewer and fewer students want their parents coming in and sitting next to them in their trigonometry class and helping them with the front, right, Jean? <laughs> but interestingly, the American Education Week was started after World War I um, because at that time, 25% of our veterans uh, couldn't read. And um, it's, uh, it's also, so it's something that's um, supported by the uh, veterans organizations um, and um, the NEA. And uh, so I just felt it was appropriate to, to make that announcement and provide people that information tonight. So. Okay. Next is dates to remember. Monday, October 31st, Professional Development Day, no school for, for students. Uh, Friday, November 11th, Veterans Day, all school offices and buildings closed. Thursday and Friday, November 24th and 25th, Thanksgiving break. Wednesday, November 2nd, coffee with the superintendent at Central, Off Central Office at 4 p.m. Uh, Monday, November 7th, Joint School Committee and Board of Selectmen meeting at the Town Hall here at 6.30. Uh, Tuesday, no November 29th, the next school committee meeting here at uh, the town hall, and also the uh, boosters meeting on November 1st at 7 o'clock, and the music parents meeting on Tuesday, November 8th at 7 as well. And next we have the report of the Assistant Superintendent for People Personnel Services, Dr. Thomas. Great, thanks Jim. Good evening everyone. Um, I have two informational pieces and then one area of approval. The first is under professional development. I'd like to give an update um, in terms of the professional development and the in-service programs that we have going on throughout the year. Um, as, as the year has progressed, we've been focusing on a variety of topics. Technology has been the theme throughout the year. Um, and 21st century skills, all about communication and technology and critical thinking and problem solving, which is intertwined and embedded within our practice. Um, an area of focus has been NEASC, as you are aware. You, you received the two-year report in your packet, mm -hmm. um, and so that's a very lengthy document um, and something that drives the focus here at Abington High School. Um, and that is something that the high school has been working on for many years, um, but with that, they spend a lot of time always revamping, um, updating, and looking at um, what areas we have moved forward on in terms of um, working to you know, accreditation status and things of that sort. Um, in terms of um, other areas, we've been doing Common Core, department meetings, um, professional development Common Core focus has been a variety of um, topics at all levels. You've heard me speak to this, um, big changes in math and ELA, and so we have had department heads working um, in all areas in terms of how we're taking the Common Core and making changes and then really having that document drive our instructional practices. So that's been ongoing as well. And then we have um, staff that go out to a variety of professional development. Um, North River in particular, we, we always send out North River, as you know, we're part of that collaborative. And they have Deb White there, who is the professional development coordinator, who does a great job in terms of coordinating um, professional development for the South Shore, um, and in particular focuses on collaborative districts. So we have um, skillful teaching going on. We have um, data coaching going on. We also have unleashing the power of collaborative inquiry. 
um, focusing, getting in front of your data, the mental health continuum that I talked about at the last meeting, whereas as the research has showed that we have a lot of mental health um, crises in families that are really spilling into the school sector um, and what type of information and practices that we need to put in place but also linkages to outside agencies so that people are aware of what types of services um, are available to them. ELL trainings is, is an area that we've been working on for many years and that's something that's offered free from the state. Legal issues, English language learners. English language learners, thank you. Sorry, a lot of acronyms. Um, please stop me if I do that again, thank you. Um, and then in terms of um, nutrition, we have a lot in terms of physical. We have the STRIDE grant, so there's a lot of documentation that is kept. You're shaking your head, Jamie, so you know a lot about this. Um, in terms of nutrition, and then in terms of really looking at BMI, um, body mass index, and um, in terms of just basically healthy ways of living. And so we're a part of that grant through North River. Um, they were funded through the state and the federal government. So that's been a um, benefit to us, not only for a teaching staff member, but also um, in all the professional development that's offered. And then in terms of literacy and expanding um, core curriculum for students with specific special needs. Um, so that's an area. And then executive functioning skills. Um, that's an area of special ed, but it's also honestly an area for every child. I mean, I have my own three kids and I'm still waiting for executive functioning skills to kick in on some of them. Um, because again, it's really about pulling it all together and really having that structure and organizational skills to be able to say, okay, I now have seven classes, how do I get all of the work done, um, when you, especially when you enter that secondary level. Um, because I know at the elementary level, you know, there's maybe one or two teachers um, working with your child, but then when you go into the secondary, you have multiple teachers, and then balancing that. And a lot of that, um, the secondary teachers work with them um, in terms of, of working through the structural piece and organizational pieces. So that's informational. Um, any questions on professional development or in-service? We have our full day program coming up on Monday, so there's a lot going on in the full day. Any questions? Alrighty, great. Second is also informational. We have a coordinated program review. As you know, you've been listening to me over the course of um, many months. Um, we had our online submissions. We worked throughout the summer. We've been doing um, the fall work. And we had our orientation day last Friday with the DESC um, auditor. And we will have two auditors that come out. So on November 22nd, we have our records review audit, which means that they will go through all IEPs, and then they will also go through all ELL, um, English language learners and individual education plans, to really look through compliance pieces. Um, that's the paperwork procedural um, components of, of the IEP, as well as um, the ELL. They'll also be focusing on civil rights, as well as special education. So that's a, um, a big area. And uh, we are basically tying it all together now in terms of actually, it's sim very similar to a NEASC, very similar to a NIAC, is you do you know, a two-year prep. Um, and here you do like a shorter version of a prep, um, getting all the documents online, getting everything ready. Um, and then they come out to do a records review for one full day with two auditors. And then they'll be back December 5th through the 9th for a five-day audit. So they'll be spending a day in each building. And they'll be actually interviewing staff members um, as well as doing observations um, within schools. And that'll be, the purpose of that is to validate, you know, all the submissions of the paperwork. So we have a lot going on in terms of the coordinated program review. I will be getting back to you. They are backlogged, so the state actually expects to hopefully get back to us a report by, the, by June. Um, and with that, it'll be focused on civil rights as well as special education. But the English language learners department is behind a year and a half. So we won't actually know um, the compliance review about English language learners for another year and a half. Um, so that'll be an ongoing. And, and we have a growing population. So a year and a half from now, we may have most likely more services in place, more staff in place. Because we currently have 26 students, but again, I know I've spoken to you about it, is the regulations, um, and the state's very well aware, the auditor also talked about it on Friday, is that she knows that most districts are not in compliance in this. Because if a student comes, you know, tomorrow and gets, you know, arrives today off the plane and comes tomorrow and they don't speak any English whatsoever, then they should be receiving 2.5 hours a day of, of English support. Um, and then, you know, they have, 
all their other supports within inclusionary settings. Um, however, most districts are not able to comply with all of that. So basically the state knows is that you're offering as much as you can, but you're working towards. And most kids with the inclusionary, they know that once kids are mainstreamed and they're around English speaking learners um, and speakers, etc., then they're basically, it's the quick learn. So they're moving into the next level of advancement. Um, so they'll be keeping an eye on that. Also, we have teachers who have been great, who have been getting trained throughout the years in terms of um, ELL and how they can embed that into their practices as well. So there's a lot going on in that area, but as I said before, and I keep saying, is I know that that's going to be an area of noncompliance. Um, and that's okay because that's going to move our decision making and we are seeing more kids moving out of other cities and towns coming into Abington. So that's going to change the face of Abington as we move forward. So any questions on that? When you said we have 26 students, is it um, younger students all across the board? It's, it's all across the board. However, most of our secondary um, students do not receive um, pull-out services. So that means that they're at a more advanced level. For our students at Center and Beaver Brook, which is where they're the most um, number of children's, children are housed, they're the ones that are receiving um, direct services for pullouts. Um, and that's where you have your 2.5, then it goes down to 1.5 hours, then it goes down to 45 minutes, et cetera, um, throughout a week of services. And we currently have um, two people that work, one for three days and then one for um, one day. So it's equivalent of four days that we have services for those 26 kids. Um, but we're working on it. And then a big part of that also is that we have to, we have Portuguese is the largest speaking population as of right now, but we also have other languages. So we're obligated to provide translations. Um, and so we have some that's translated, but we don't have every document translated because we don't know what translation they'll need. So we have listed on our letterheads that upon request it's available. Um, and then we also try to have as much as possible in Portuguese because we do know that that is an area. Um, you know, that is our highest number. Mm -hmm. Sure. And we also be responsible for the testing of those students to make sure that. Right. MIPA and Mila O's is, we also have MCAS, as you know, as an analysis for all kids. But then in terms of our ELL population, there's also um, MIPA and Mila O. And basically that looks at reading and writing acquisition. Um, and then the, you look at that analysis, you determine if the child is making um, progress, and then you determine if they need more services uh, or what you know, plan needs to be set in place. Um, because sometimes we're looking at, okay, is it the language barrier why this child is struggling, or is it they may have a disability? And so sometimes I'm calling such as a Brockton or a Boston or a Worcester or Springfield, you go towards those bigger towns that already have that infrastructure in place in terms of could we contract out a psychologist or whomever to do some testing in their native language to determine if there is a disability um, and things of that sort. So, but because Abington, um, we have a low incidence population, it's small, um, you know, we reach out to other places in order to, um, and Brockton's great. I mean, websites, you know, with technology, it's just fabulous. I can jump on the Brockton website, get, you know, some information there as well as some names, and we're able to make that connection. And because Abington is so close to Brockton, we're able to work that out with families. Great. Good. Thank you. Um, Oh, the other piece I wanted to say about professional development is we are reading this book as a leadership team as, and um, our curriculum leaders and professional development leaders. And it's a really great book. And so if any of you want to borrow mine um, or any of ours, because I think that, um, you know, education, we're going, going, going. We have 180 days, you're going a million miles an hour. Um, teachers are working really hard all day long. Administrators are working. But we never have enough time to sit and talk. Um, in terms of, of our practice enough. There's just not enough hours in the day or the school year. Um, and so with focus, uh, Mike Schmoker does a really nice job of really breaking it down to what is most important about teaching, learning, and assessment and keeping your focus on that. And so you're really looking at what are the priorities of the district, linking that to the state and federal government, but then also holding um, firm in terms of what is most important to us. And this has generated a lot of discussion because there's a lot going on, especially um, in terms of moving forward, um, looking at supervision and evaluation. 
and getting out in, in classrooms and being a part of working together with teachers and administrators and really doing that walkthrough and that whole process. So there really is a teaming and so that people are doing those true quality um, mentoring, leadership, as well as supervision and evaluation. Um, so that it really is a meaningful part uh, of work um, with supervision and evaluation. And in terms of the focus, it really always makes you question, um, why are we doing this and how does it relate to children? And so in this book, it really breaks down, you know, these are the main focus areas and really try to look at your decision making, your strategic planning, et cetera, in terms of what is most important um, about teaching, learning, or assessment. So if you want to borrow this, I welcome you because we're going to be having conversations throughout the school year um, and then moving forward in terms of, of making decisions in terms of budget and things of that sort in the future. All righty? Great. And then our last piece is that we have um, homeschool requests. So I do need a motion for approval on this. You received a sheet from me at the beginning of the meeting um, updated in terms of we have two families. We have two children from one family. Um, one child is in ninth grade, another in fifth grade, and so the family has made a request for homeschool approval as well as another family for a ninth grader. So they have filled out all the homeschool paperwork. Um, I have checked in terms of the, the process, in terms of going online and, and making sure that the credentials are there. And then the family is responsible for getting back to us in terms of assessments, reports, um, et cetera. So I need to get school committee approval to um, move forward in terms of approving these families for homeschool. Okay, so we need a motion to approve the homeschool designation as presented. Motion. Motion to act on. Second by Jeanette. All in favor? Aye. Um, Great. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. Next up, we have the report of the Assistant Superintendent for Business and Finance. Good evening. I have um, a couple of items for you tonight. The first one is the FY13 uh, budget development and planning schedule. <coughs> um, there's a copy of it in your packet. It's that time that we begin the development of next year's uh, school department budget. Um, at this, at this point, um, principals and department heads have received information. They're putting together their requests and, then, and we'll be receiving them. I'll be receiving them in the next few weeks. And then we'll be putting together a, a preliminary FY13 budget. The only change in this planning schedule from uh, past years is um, we are proposing doing our initial budget proposal for the school committee um, at the end of February. Previously, it had been done in the beginning of January. Um, and part of uh, our thinking on that is um, information is coming out later and later in terms of um, state funding and federal funding. And um, I think the, it'll still give us plenty of time in terms of presenting, uh, getting articles in for town meeting, and, uh, and making adjustments throughout you know, March, April, and um, into town meeting. Anyone did, any questions? Other than looking for, I have, there's a typo, typo on the here. agenda. It should okay. say motion to approve the FY 2013 okay. school department budget need schedule as presented. Need a motion to approve the FY 2013 school department budget schedule as presented. Motion. motion by Jeanette. Second by Ellen. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. The exciting news is the Woodsdale window update. And the all news. <laughs> there still aren't windows on site, but we're anticipating um, early next week, as of this afternoon, we're still anticipating um, arrival of, uh, of materials on site Monday and Tuesday of next week. Um, as of today, they won't be win windows won't be first. It'll be um, curtain walls, which are the large glass openings at doorways, um, cafeteria, um, above the um, gymnasium, and doors. 
and they'll be starting on those and then as soon as windows come in that'll be those will be put off and the windows will become the priority um, we'll be meeting on Monday afternoon um, to have next week's schedule we'll be meeting every Monday actually to do the following week's uh, schedule with the contractor as I've mentioned before um, their work schedule is uh, 3:30 to 11 p.m. so the actual construction itself will not impact the uh, instructional day for students. Um, a letter, if it hasn't gone home, will be going home this week to uh, all Woodsdale students. Um, after school help will be limited till up till three o'clock, and then at that point, we're going to have students. Uh, we're we're going to empty the building for that short period, the four four weeks or so, five weeks that we're anticipating um, the window project. That way, they can come in and, and do their work. Um, Again, we haven't removed a window yet, but my understanding from the contractors, they are very confident that um, students will leave school at 2.15 one day. Um, 3.30, they'll begin construction. By 8 o'clock the following morning, the student will have new windows in their classroom. Um, and there's also a possibility at the beginning that it might take a little bit longer as they're doing the first sets of windows, but they're confident that that will happen. Um, so we're very excited, and um, hopefully by the next time we meet, we will have, um, if, if not all, a majority of, uh, of the windows and doors replaced at the Woodsdale School. I know, I know that, that parents and children and the people that work in that building are excited, but also with all of the work that goes on behind the scenes in terms of estimating, engineering, the design process, the construction meetings, the bid process, I think we're pretty excited that, and, and that meanwhile, it's like crickets are chirping at the school and there's no progress made. Right. I feel like I keep giving you the same updates, right. but. <laughs> so we're excited that we're going to see Windows 2. Peter, I was over there um, last week filling in for Jeanette for the school council meeting, and I hadn't been over there for a couple of years. That was one of the days where it was pouring rain, and you look at the windows going into the front door there, and they're all rusty, and they're all just disgusting it's like yep. it's time for new windows yep. so we can't wait we're very excited there's no um, action on that um, the next um, item I have for you is uh, as we've talked about the Mass School Building Authority um, has statements of interest for us for um, renovation um, of let me back up for a second MSBA has already accepted the application for the for, for the Frolio School for update or res, um, renovation from a couple of years ago. That's what we're in feasibility for. In addition to that, we have statements of interest for Abington High School, for Beaverbrook Elementary School, and the Woodsdale School for upgrades and renovations. Those are kind of in the queue behind the um, feasibility study. Every year, we're asked to resubmit statements of interest to the Mass School Building Authority. In past years, we've had to resubmit in the entire statement of interest. This year, they're streamlining the process for us, and we need to recertify our applications for those um, three schools. So I'm asking um, tonight for the approval of uh, the resubmission of those applications. And Felicia, the um, recertification is, is at no cost to Correct. anybody, it's just updating your records. Just yep. sweat equity. Yep, sweat equity. Okay. So we need a motion to approve the recertification application for the Massachusetts School Building Authority, MSBA. Statements of interest as presented. A motion by Ellen. Second by Jeanette. All in favor? Aye. I only have one other item. Um, Mr. West, I just wanted to talk uh, for a moment about the capital item that we received last night at town meeting. Um, during the, in our capital in the capital plan for the town um, that was uh, that was passed by town meeting, the school department got $105,000 for masonry work to be done um, on school buildings. Um, we're in the preliminary phase of determining exactly what those are. Originally, we had submitted for a lot more than that, um, and then it's you know it's as we've gone through the 
process leading up to town meeting, um, we were we have been allocated $105,000. I can tell you the priority schools are the Frolio and Center schools. Um, a lot of masonry work was able to be done in conjunction with the window projects at both the high school um, and the ECC formerly ECC, and some will be done at the Woodsdale um, as they related to um, the openings for the windows and um, water penetration around the windows. So they are not our priorities because some work uh, has been done in those schools in the last few years. Um, at the Frolio School, we have some uh, significant masonry work that needs to be done, especially um, on the stairways at the front of the schools, um, in addition to just areas around the building. Um, same thing with Central school. There's uh, areas that um, will need to be repointed and some will have to have bricks removed and, um, and remortared in there. Um, so we're really, we are excited about that. As we've talked about before, keeping our building envelope tight is really important. Once you get water in behind bricks and they freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw, then you're asking for, uh, for, for greater problems. And we have been able to, to do patchwork in the past, but this will be an opportunity for us to do some, some really good work in the schools. The only other item from last night that was passed over um, and we understand, we understood last night waiting. It's not even our responsibility. It's a responsibility of the town. There's a $7,000 piece to pay a transportation bill that is really the responsibility of the town of Abington to transport students to Norfolk Agricultural High School. But because it's more efficient for us to manage that for the town, we've taken on that responsibility and that's in our budget. And then they up our budget by that amount to handle that bill. Because what happens is, um, Felicia goes out and consolidates the service that we need with other South Shore communities so that we get one bus or two buses rather than individual communities sending buses all the way to Walpole. Walpole. For no folk Aggie, so we save money by consolidating those. It just makes more sense for efficiency to save money for us to do that than the town to do it. There's a need to put on an additional bus because all towns in the South Shore are shipping more students to no folk agricultural, and so that's what that bill was about. And that's they, they passed it over, but the commitment from the town manager was that that would come back so that we could take care of that for the town at the spring but time the, the special within the annual. Yep. Yep. So. That's my business. Any other questions? No. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Felicia. Yeah. Um, under uh, informational items, um, there's, a, there's a couple of things. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, the first one is, you have a letter from Terry Sullivan, the high school principal, communicating to Janet Allison at the New England Association of Schools and Colleges her um, update on the progress Abington High School has made uh, with regard to accreditation. Now, Terry will come and she'll give you a full presentation on the progress that has been made, but also the New England Association of Schools and Colleges is going to get back to us and tell us what their finding is uh, about these results. So what made sense was to at least um, give you this tonight um, so that you had it, be willing to answer any questions that you might have, but then also when the New England Association of Schools and Colleges gets back to us within the next uh, month, then we would do an update all at once. So you'd have both pieces, uh, so you'd have a, a full picture of, of the situation. Um, and we're hopeful that, that we'll be able to do that, um, again, within the next month and a half, two months, just waiting. We're just waiting for NIASC to get back to us. Mm -hmm. um, you also have the school council meetings, and you also have a photocopy of a thank you note from our Teacher of the Year, from Mr. Steve Shannon. Uh, he sent to the school committee uh, the following, thank you for the honor of being elected as the 2010-2020 uh, Teacher of the Year. It is a privilege to be recognized for one's efforts in and out of the classroom. Thank you also for acknowledging the vital work that all teachers do on behalf of students in Abington by offering this yearly award. Most sincerely, Steve Shannon. So I just want to read that. And that's all I have. 
Okay, new business and establishing of the next school committee meeting date. Monday, November 7th, 2011, joint meeting with the Board of, Board of Selectmen. And Tuesday, November 29th, 2011, our regular meeting. And we need to uh, approve the accounts. Okay, and then we're going into executive session for the purpose of considering a level three grievance with the Abington Education Association and not to return to public session by roll call. Let's call it. Yes. Ms. Leary, yes. yes. Chair votes yes. Thank you all for attending.